This is part one of the video for making our custom bicycle fork. The fork consists of two blades that have dropouts attached with slots in the dropouts. The blades are attached at the top at the crown and growing out of the crown is the steering tube. The geometry for the fork will be controlled by the geometry sketches that you customized for your own personal bicycle. That geometry sketch will be inserted into a new file for your fork to control the overall geometry. The same file will later be inserted into a new file to build your frame. This technique allows a single file to coordinate two different parts that have to interface with each other. In this example, the frame and the fork are responsible for controlling the wheelbase of the bike. The fork and the frame will eventually be in separate parts, but this sketch will guarantee that the two always act in concert to maintain the proper wheelbase. In addition to that, this sketch will make sure that the angle of the head tube and the steering tube always match, and will also make sure the top of the fork crown matches up with the bottom of the head tube, and that the top of the steering tube is in the proper relation to the stem. If any changes are ever made to this geometry sketch, they will automatically be reflected in the fork and the frame files. The geometry part consists of several sketches and several planes. The planes control the width of the front fork dropouts and also the width of the rear dropouts. This part with the geometry sketches will be inserted into a brand new file that will eventually become the solid geometry for the bicycle fork. The sketches in that file will act as an underlay to control all the geometry of the fork. It will control the center of the wheel and the dropout, the amount of offset that is in the fork, the top of the crown, the angle of the steering tube, and the top of the steering tube. In addition to this, the planes in the inserted part will control the width of the inside of the dropouts. Part one of this video will focus on the process of inserting the geometry part into the new bicycle fork part. Here we have a new part that consists of nothing but the standard planes and the origin. This is the part that will become the fork. We're going to start by inserting the geometry file as the first feature in the feature tree. We're going to insert part and browse to the file that we desire, which in this case is the bike geometry example file. Immediately a dialog comes up and gives us a choice of the types of geometry we want brought into our new part from the geometry part. In our case, our geometry part only has unabsorbed sketches and planes, but if it had solid bodies, we could choose to bring those over as well or leave them behind. So I've checked planes, unabsorbed sketches, and I've left the locate part launch move dialog unchecked. What this will do is make sure that when the geometry part is inserted, its origin will coexist with the origin of this new part. So just check on the green check mark. So we see what has happened is the bicycle part has been inserted as the first feature into the feature tree. And what has been inserted into the graphics window are all the sketches that are part of the bicycle geometry part including any of the planes that were part of that file as well. If I click on the plus, I have two folders, one for the planes that are contained in the geometry part and one for the sketches. I can further click on these to view these individual planes and the sketches. You can hide and show these planes and these sketches just like any other planes and sketches you would find normally in the feature tree. The inserted part 
brought along its own front plane, top plane, and right plane, which are coincident with the front plane, top plane, and right plane of our new part. For the design of the fork, I want to always use the front, top, and right plane of the fork part and not of the inserted part. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide these planes so that I won't accidentally choose them. There are also some sketches that I do not need to be using for the fork, but will be important for the frame. There are also some sketches that I will not need for the fork. I will not need the chain layout. I will need not need the seat and handlebar layout. I will not need the rear dropout layout. This also means that I won't need the chain plane and I won't need the rear dropout plane. While I've got this open you can see that for these inserted planes and sketches the original names of the planes and sketches have been brought over with the inserted part and then the name of the part has also been appended to the ends of all of these. So in every case, FA10 underscore bike dash geometry underscore example was appended to the names of the sketches and to the names of the planes in order to indicate that these planes and sketches are coming from an inserted part. I'll just narrow this window back down again because I don't need to read those appended names. So now what we have are the bare essentials of the controlling planes and sketches that will be used to build the actual solid geometry for our fork. That process will be shown in step two of this video.